Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of our Minecraft series in Scratch. Today we're going to be adding mining to our Minecraft game. The first thing we're going to do is fix a couple of bugs. The first fix is to drag change sign by pick random and put it before we repeat. And then let's drag out this stamp block along with the show and hide block. And we're going to be replacing this with a create clone of myself. Then when we start as a clone, we of course need to show and switch costume to grass. Let's test this out and you'll see that it almost looks exactly the same, but the world generation is a lot bigger. And now we're also using clones. We can drag blocks around and modify them instead of when we're using pen and we can't. Okay, let's get to mining. We need to store the positions of the block in a list. Let's make a list and I'll call it blocks. And I'll make sure this is for all sprites and press OK. Before we create a clone of myself, let's drag out two of add things to blocks. And instead of thing, we're going to be adding the position of the blocks. So I dragged out add x position to blocks and add y position to blocks. Now when we press the green flag, you'll see that our list is now full of positions. 218 in fact. We need this list to detect if we can place a block or mine a block. In fact, let's make those variables now. I'll make a variable called can mine, and I'll make another one called can place. After we create the world, let's drag out a forever loop. And the first thing we need to do is show our mining cursor on the screen. Let's go to our costumes. I'm going to right click and duplicate the grass block. I'll call this mine and I'll press the convert to vector button. I'll select the rectangle tool, set the fill to nothing and I'll draw a black border around our grass block. Then I'll delete the grass block and we have a white square. That's the exact same size as a grass block. I'm just going to turn up the outline a little bit. Let's make a new block and I'll call this go to mouse. This block right here will help us know which block we are selecting. Let's drag out a go to block and we want to move to mouse x and mouse y. Before we can test this out, let's drag out a show block and we also need to drag out our go to mouse block. When we press the green flag, you'll see that our black square shows up on the screen. But the thing is that it's moving exactly with our mouse instead of sticking to the block grid that we have here. Back in our go to mouse block, Let's go to operators and drag out a round block. A multiply block and a divide block. I'm going to piece them together just like this. Let's input some values for the second divide block. I'm going to put 32 and I'm going to put 32 in here. Then let's drag in mouse X. And then let's right click on the block and press duplicate. So we have two. And instead of mouse X, I'll put mouse Y. Then I'll snap these back in the go to block. When we press the green flag, you'll see that our cursor is indeed snapping to a grid, but it's offset by a little bit. This is caused by our create world block. I'll type in minus 224 and minus 160. And I'll also replace this one down here to minus 160. Now you'll see that our cursor is no longer offset. So we have our cursor, but we still can't mine the blocks. We first need a way to detect if we can place a block or if we can mine a block. Let's make a block and I'll call it can place. And I'll tick run without screen refresh. We need to loop through the entire block list and find out which positions are already taken and which ones aren't. Let's make a variable, I'll call it i, and tick for the sprite only. Let's set i to 1, and then let's repeat length of blocks. To see if our position is already taken, let's compare our values in our x position with the values in our block list. If x position is equal to item i of blocks, 
If we have detected a block on the x position, let's also see if we have detected a block on our y position. We need to make sure they're exactly the same. So to do this, I'll add 1 to i. And I'll change this to y position. Then that means that we can't place a block. Let's set can place to false. And let's not move any further by stopping this script. Then we need to change i by 2. I'll put this right under the if statement. And then if we have not found a position inside of the list, that means we can place a block. So let's set can place to true. And here comes the fun part, where we can actually place a block. I'll go to our forever loop, and let's drag out our can place block. So this will be forever detecting if we can place a block. Now, before we can test out our script, let's go to the create world, and we need to delete all of blocks before we create the world. So you'll see that can place is currently true, and when I move over a block, can place is false. And this works for the whole level. So now we have a way of detecting if we can mine a block and when to place a block. Let's check if can place is true. If it is, then let's also detect if we have pressed the mouse. So if mouse down. Then let's repeat until we're not pressing the mouse. So repeat until not mouse down. Then let's go to the mouse. Let's check if we can place. And then if we can place, so if can place is true, I'll just duplicate this one up here. We need to create our block. In our create world, we already create a clone right here. We can simplify this into one block instead of three lines. I'll make a block called create block at. I'll add an input for x and another one for y. Let's press OK. And then I'll just drag this and put it inside of our create block at. I'll delete the x position and y position inputs. And then I'll drag in our x and y instead. Now let's replace this inside of our create world block. And then I'll put in x position and y position. We do the same thing for here. We create block at, and I drag in x position and y position. So you'll see that if we click, we can place a block. And I can also hold down the mouse and draw on the screen with grass blocks. So that's it for episode 2. Make sure to stay tuned for episode 3 where we'll get to mining blocks. And make sure to stay subscribed for more updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in episode 3.